So far we have talked about two mechanisms of protein transport. First one was how proteins are transported into nucleus. We said that these proteins can be fully folded and they can still be imported into the nucleus with the help of specific receptors and also nuclear, uh, nuclear specific proteins present on the nuclear pore. Then we talked about mitochondrial import. We said that there are proteins that have to be imported into the mitochondria. They have to be in a linear configuration. They cannot be folded proteins. Now let's talk about a different type of import. Now these proteins that are imported into the, into the endoplasmic reticulum, they are imported, they're actually injected in the endoplasmic reticulum while they are being, while they are being manufactured. So let's look at that. First of all, briefly a few words about endoplasmic reticulum and smooth endoplasmic reticulum in specific. Regions of ER that lack bound ribosomes are called smooth endoplasmic reticulum. And in great majority of these cells, these regions are not plentiful. They're just specific parts of basically overall the organelle, uh, which we call endoplasmic reticulum, mostly is rough and partly small portions of it are smooth. Smooth ER contains endoplasmic reticulum exit sites. At this sites, vesicle forms and it carries, these vesicles carry cargo in the form of soluble proteins and also proteins that are embedded in the membrane of endoplasmic reticulum and these vesicles bud off and they fuse with the Golgi apparatus. We have seen an animation of that. And I'll show you part of that animation again. In hepatocytes, smooth ER doubles up in the surface area during detoxification of lipid soluble drugs and various harmful compounds produced by metabolism, for example, phenobarbital. ER in most eukaryotic cells stores calcium ions. We have talked about that, which acts as a secondary messenger. In muscle cells, for example, there is abundant endoplasmic reticulum and the endoplasmic reticulum of muscle cells is referred to as sarcoplasmic reticulum which sequesters one of the functions of this endoplasmic reticulum is sequestering calcium ions from the cytosol. We know if there's abundance of calcium ions in the cytoplasm, it acts as a secondary messenger and could convey different signals to the cell. Here you can see electron micrograph of rough endoplasmic reticulum. You can see that uh, these endoplasmic reticular membranes are studded with these dark balls. And these dark balls are basically the ribosomes, which are synthesizing proteins directly attached to the ER membrane, creating regions, which we call rough endoplasmic reticulum. So this is an image of uh, electron micrograph of endoplasmic reticulum. I would like to re-emphasize that all eukaryotic cells have, have abundant endoplasmic reticulum which is organized into net-like branching tubules and flattened sacs throughout the cytoplasm. Here what you are looking at is the immunofluorescence micrograph and it is highlighting the network endoplasmic reticulum in the cell. The tubules and sacs are interconnected so the entire endoplasmic space in a luminum is basically interconnected and it is basically sort of a labyrinth which is inside the cell. This organelle is sort of like a labyrinth present inside the cell. This highly convoluted space is called the ER lumen or ER cisternal space. The ER membrane separates ER lumen from the cytosol and it mediates the selective transfer of molecules between these two compartments. ER captures selected proteins from cytosol as they are being synthesized. The two types, one transmembrane proteins, these proteins are the ones which are embedded in the in a membrane. As you know, the receptor proteins, these are the type of proteins which are also have a domain which is present or which is the which has a transmembrane domain which is present in the hydrophobic part of the, the membrane. And also water soluble proteins which are fully translocated across the ER membrane and are released into the ER lumen. We know in the secretory pathway, the proteins that cells secrete also are the proteins that are water soluble and they're injected into the lumen of ER 
from there they bite into a vesicle and then ultimately there those vesicles fuse after exchanging after several exchanges fuse with the plasma membrane releasing the contents some of the transmembrane proteins function in er but many are destined to reside in the plasma membrane for example receptors that we have talked about or membrane of other organelles water soluble proteins are destined either for the lumen of an organelle or also for secretion for example we have talked about how antibodies are produced and this is one of the ways they would be secreted is through the er golgi apparatus uh, route all of these proteins have same kind of signal sequence and are translocated by similar mechanism we'll talk about those mechanisms uh, later but first of all i would like to emphasize and reemphasize that er transport is co-translational meaning that proteins are not fully manufactured they are partly manufactured when they bind the er and they as a protein is being made it is being injected in the the lumen of the er so which again contrasts with the post translational process which we talked about for example in case of mitochondria or nucleus one end of the protein is usually translocated into er as rest of the polypeptide chain is being made the protein is never released into the cytosol and is therefore in never in danger of folding up before reaching the translocator in the er membrane this is a very important part because i will explain to you later that there are certain proteins that are not required in the cytoplasm if they are present in cytoplasm they can be very dangerous for the cell itself now i would like to show you a brief animation of this process i have shown you previously also but i would like to show this to you again so i hope the animation was helpful in you comprehending how the proteins are co-translationally forced into the endoplasmic reticulum